Hi, my name is Kate Hall and I'm a member of ACER Vancouver Island University. I would like to demonstrate how carbon dioxide is a more effective gas at trapping heat than nitrogen and oxygen which make up 99% of our atmosphere. This is relevant because our carbon dioxide emissions in our atmosphere are increasing and may be related to an increase in temperature as well. The materials that we'll be using in this experiment are a stopwatch, two 150 watt light bulbs, baking soda and vinegar, a barbecue lighter, a side arm Erlenmeyer flask fixed with about half a meter of Tigon tubing and a rubber stopper, two digital thermometers, two large 4,000 or 2,000 milliliter beakers, two light fixtures capable of handling 150 watt bulbs fixed to two ring stands with clamps. It's also important to have some way to record your data, such as a table and on a chalkboard or in a notebook. We are using black felt to put on the bottom of the beakers. This substrate will absorb the visible light coming from the lamps and convert it into long wave or infrared radiation, or as we commonly know it, radiant heat. An Erlenmeyer flask fitted with a sidearm and some Tigon tubing will hold a reaction of baking soda and vinegar. This reaction will produce carbon dioxide. Once we stopper the top of the flask, the carbon dioxide will have nowhere to go except through the tubing, which we're going to put into one of the beakers. This will be our experimental beaker here on the right, and it'll be the beaker that contains the carbon dioxide. Before we begin, it's important to know what the initial temperature of the system is. So we're going to use our digital thermometers to figure out what the temperature of each of the beakers is. The experimental beaker is 24.9 degrees Celsius, and the control beaker is 24.2 degrees Celsius. I'm going to pour vinegar into the Erlenmeyer flask. That's about 100 milliliters. I'm going to add about 20 grams of baking soda. Once it's added, I'm going to turn on the lights and press start on my stopwatch to begin the time. I'm going to record the temperature of the two tanks every 30 seconds for about five minutes. The carbon dioxide produced in the reaction in the sidearm flask is more dense than the air around it. So it will stay in the beaker to a certain extent. Of course, if I were to blow in that beaker or disturb the air, then this would allow the CO2 to leave. So it's important not to disrupt the air around the beaker. Okay, 30 seconds. The control tank is 24.8 and the experimental is 25.5. We can test for the presence of carbon dioxide in the experimental flask by using something like a barbecue lighter. The flame at the end of the barbecue lighter will go out in the presence of high concentrations of carbon dioxide. And we can see that the level of carbon dioxide in this tank is about here. After one minute, the temperatures are 25.7 degrees and 26.8. If I do the same flame test in my control beaker, the flame doesn't go out. After a minute and a half, the temperatures are 26.2 for the control tank and 27.3 for the experimental.
After two minutes, the temperature on the control tank is 27.1, and on the experimental is 28.3. After two and a half minutes, the temperature of the control tank is 27.5 degrees and the experimental is 29.7. After three minutes, the temperature of the control is 27.9 and the experimental is 30.8. After three and a half minutes, the temperature of the control is 28.2 and the experimental is 32.5. After four minutes, the temperature of the control is 28.7 degrees and the experimental is 33.5. After about four minutes, the temperature in the beaker containing high levels of carbon dioxide was almost five degrees warmer than the beaker containing just normal room air, which is 99% nitrogen and oxygen gas. This shows that carbon dioxide has a better ability to trap radiant heat or long wave radiation than nitrogen gas and oxygen gas. The materials used in this setup were used because they are similar to the features that we see in our natural environment. The lights are acting like the sun. They produce visible light which passes through our atmosphere, or in this case the air in the beaker, and is absorbed by, in real life, the surface of the earth and oceans, in our setup, a black felt substrate. This visible light energy cannot be destroyed, instead it changes form into infrared energy, or otherwise known as radiant heat. This radiant heat is emitted from the surface of the earth or the surface of this black substrate and it goes back up through the column of air in the atmosphere. Now, if there are a lot of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide in that atmosphere, not as much infrared radiation or radiant heat can escape from that column of air or that atmosphere and this energy will get trapped and it will cause temperature to rise.